guys. So, being honest with ourselves, my hair's shit, uh, but also being honest with ourselves, Harry Kane hasn't lived up to expectations so far for England in the Euros, uh, especially after what uh, the, like the attacking output he's had at Tottenham last season with, I think it was 37 goals and assists in the Premier League alone, which I, I'm assuming that's probably as many uh, goal involvements as games played for Tottenham last season, probably more. So, and and his, his uh, overall play for England hasn't been really good enough. It doesn't match the style of play that England play. He hasn't got a player like Hung Min Son running through the middle, making a run for him to pass the ball to, because um, that's not how England play. England's play is more of a back build up. And uh, not not so much counter attacking, which is sort of uh, top, Tottenham's main way of scoring goals. And the question is: Is he undroppable for England? And should he be dropped for the Germany game? So my opinion is that that well, there's two answers. One, he is undroppable for Gareth Southgate because. I like Southgate, but well, maybe not. Maybe it's not that Southgate can't do it. Maybe it's the fact that you always know that he's got it in him to like be the best striker in the world, which he is on his day. And obviously, with the Germany game coming up on Tuesday. Um, People are questioning: Should he start? And um, I think that. Well, I, I think it's fairly obvious that he is going to. Um, and people will say, "Okay, but if if we if we do start him, think of what he could do with the way that Germany play. They play free at the back. We saw in the France game that." to beat Germany you have to get them on the counter attack and that is um, Harry Kane's style of football but the problem is Harry Kane doesn't play the way that England do so, like whereas Raheem Sterling it is made for him it, it's made for Raheem Sterling to pick up the ball the edge of the box cut inside get a shot off or uh, a quick ball over the top where Raheem Sterling's gone round the right back um, and managed to get on the end of the ball and try and uh, get a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and score. So I, I think personally that we should go Raheem Sterling down the middle. Or, or maybe not, maybe, maybe like a, a false nine. I don't, I don't think Calvert-Lewin's the way forward. I, I think Calvert-Lewin's gone purely for something different if we're chasing a game with 20 minutes to go. With the last game, with Grealish and Saka being the best two players on the pitch for us, Mason Mount probably isn't going to be involved on, in, on Tuesday's game. I personally think we should give Phil Foden and go down the middle. Now, I know that seems absolutely mental, but... Saka on the right was really good. Grealish on the left. Oh, I suppose you got Fitz Sterling in somehow as well, haven't you? Oh, it, it, it's a tough one. Um, because Grealish and Shaw worked really well on the left-hand side together. So, this video is becoming more how do England, how should England line up against Germany, isn't that? That's what I'm going to talk to. How do England uh, line up against Germany? Okay, so in goal, Pickford, obviously. Defence, Kyle Walker. He's, he, in my opinion, he's, he's, he's suits us more than Rhys James. Rhys James, I think, would be suited to a back three or a uh, or a wing back, one of the two. He doesn't really, for some reason, he can play 
the right centre back or the right wing back, but the right back is not so good. That that's just my opinion of what I've seen of him. Uh, feel free to correct me if you're a Chelsea fan. Um, so I go Kyle Walker, Harry Maguire, John Stones, and Luke Shaw. And then midfield, Declan Rice. You can't start Jude Bellingham in in it in a game where like he, he hasn't actually had any significant minutes. I would personally go Jordan Henderson. I know loads of people are going to hate that, but that that's what I would do. I think the, the experience he's got is vital in a game like this, and I I I think he's fully fit, and because he's been injured and played out of position pretty much since Christmas. People are forgetting how good a midfielder he is. And he was the best player on the pitch for the second half against um, Czech Republic when he came on. So I'd play Jordan Henderson alongside Declan Rice. Now people think, oh, that's just two sitting players. It's not, Jordan Henderson is not a sitting midfielder. He is, he, 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 in this lineup, he would do for, for England what he does for Liverpool. And then alongside them, I'd probably play Grealish in a three. Then up front, Sterling, Foden and Saka. The reason is Saka, brilliant dribbler and um, like just brilliant carrier of the ball. Sterling is our main goal threat. He's our only scorer in the whole tournament so far. And Foden, also brilliant striker of the ball and overall play is phenomenal. So I think that's the lineup I would go with. Anyway, feel free to comment yours down below. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.